Hi, I'm Captain Mike, and in this video, we're going to talk about uh, coloring some ceramics uh, with uh, ferric chloride. Uh, this is sort of like Raku, but it's not, in that you will do some sort of oxygen reduction uh, firing in the uh, process. Uh, it's just at the start of it and not at the end of it. There's probably any number of ways you could do this. I watched a couple of videos on um, YouTube, said, hey, gee, that's interesting. So I went out and bought myself a gallon of uh, ferry chloride. I didn't think a quart was enough. I think a quart would have been plenty. But anyway, I bought this. I will put the link below on where you can get this on Amazon. And this particular company does sell it in smaller sizes. And if you have a Prime account, it includes shipping. You know how that works. Uh, but then you can you can do your own research and find out if you want to play with this. Uh, but it is uh, ferric chloride. Now, before we even get started here, uh, this this video definitely needs a safety statement. You will wear rubber gloves, and I highly advise some sort of eye protection. Uh, you splash it in your eyes, it's not going to be pleasant. You get this stuff on your hands and it's probably not going to come out. I would imagine long-term exposure could be dangerous, short-term not, but it's going to damage your clothes, it's going to damage your, discolor your hands, and anything it gets on, it is highly corrosive. This is a stainless steel table right here, and I wish I could show you all the spots on it where it would etch right into the stainless steel or any other kind of metal. Uh, fact is, that's what the stuff mainly is used for, is uh, etching metal, among other things, I'm sure, but that's what jumped right out at me. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, we're going to process some, and I'm gonna kinda show you what it looks like after you have dipped it in and it's dried. It has this yellow color. It's just yellow, as you can see. And then you'll take it and I wrap it with different types of organic material. Uh, I, what you do gets, gives you a different, a different look. You know, the little lizard here, uh, he was wrapped with strands. Come on, Leaf, I didn't ask for you yet. It's not ready for you to make your entrance. Uh, these little strands come off. This is just a piece of a wire off of something that didn't work anymore. I'm sure you got a lot of it around. And I just wrapped the little rascal with the, this stuff here. And, you know, you fire it up to the temperature that the copper or whatever you put on him will melt or combust, and it leaves the little marks. And, of course, that's, that's the chloride. It changed from that to this. And a lot of it had to do with the, the fumes that were encapsulated in the uh, oxygen reduction method that I use. We'll get to it. Uh, I use also use sugar. I use salt. And I use some ground up or chopped up little tiny pieces of copper. I also use vegetation. And uh, I use green vegetation because what I do is I, I'll take some... Uh, um, let me get some. You could use aloe or anything else, but I have this gel tastic that I'll never use all off probably. And I pull a leaf off and put some gel tastic on it and stick it. And I just use all kinds of leaves. None of this is poison oak, by the way. Don't worry about it. It's not. Three leaves, but it's not. There's a piece of cedar. Whatever you've got out there. But you'll take that leaf and you'll stick it on your leaf at. Ah, there's the leaf. You can barely see them, but you can see them. And uh, stick it on there and fire it and you get that effect. Um, this was copper and it stuck to it. And you'll apply these things, the sugar, the salt, and the copper, and things like that while this is wet. Uh, this is probably some copper. I can't remember. I, I fired all this stuff up. Some of it sugar. Uh, that had cat hair on it. Thanks, BC. We appreciate your cat hair. Uh, 
No cats were harmed. And uh, uh, that had some leaves wrapped around it, just, just long old leaves. Different things. Some had salt, some had sugar. AU, that had aluminum around it. So, and that was sugar. So it gives you a little different, but it's all basically going to be rust colored. Uh, when you put glaze on it, it changes it a little bit, you see. Don't know what this one was. This one looks like it had nothing. It might have been just pure ferric chloride. But it goes from this brown color, from the red to this kind of shiny brown. Uh, I think that was sugar or salt. It it changed the, the, the pattern and the technique. Just some interesting, interesting stuff. This one was just fired way up there. It was fired about 1900 degrees just for grins and giggles. And of course, that's what happens to almost all that clear that you put on it. You can't hardly even see the line that separates the regular from, but that's what happens. The color changed actually from this red to this color here when fired up around cone 04. So that's where we stand on that. So what we're going to do is going to be down and dirty. I'm going to put on my gloves and we are going to uh, dip one of these things and I'm going to show you two ways to wrap it. Okay, and this can be done, uh, if you do it in a microwave kiln, do this where it's highly ventilated. Don't do this in your microwave kiln. These little bitty ones probably would work in your microwave kiln. I have not done one. Just make sure it's balled up really good when I, we get to the encapsulating part and so it doesn't touch the graphite on your microwave kiln. I just do these in a, in a small kiln that I have, it's outside and I stick it in there and I can ramp it up as fast as I want to go. I go 9999 to whatever temperature, at least, at least 1200, 1300 degrees and then let it cool. Uh, but you can go higher. You have to play with this. Okay, so we have our gloves on and we have the air conditioner going here. It's making a little bit of noise, but it's going to keep some of the fumes. It's, the return will pull some out. Uh, this stuff, as I told you, is I'll probably just slop some everywhere. You'll pour it in. Make sure you have rags and things handy so you can sop all this stuff up. Uh, anyway, you got your ferric chloride. That's all it is to it. It's just, just looks like iodine, if any of y'all know what iodine is. You can use anything that you want to use that, you, that your microwave, or not your microwave, excuse me, your kiln is big enough to handle. But all you do is dip it. You can dip it, drop it, immerse it, whatever. And, uh, and let me get something here. I just set it like that. And get another one. I just got two pieces, you know, two pieces. Okay. You want to put about, from what I can read, about two coats. Nothing says you can't use three coats, four coats, one coat. Whatever you want to use. But you'll, uh, we'll let them set just a minute and I'll dip them again and uh, then we'll put the color on them that we're going to, or not color, the natural material. And I'll show you the two ways that I'm going to wrap them up, okay? Our time for the second dipping on these things. We're only going to dip them twice. Uh, for the sake of this video. Now here's uh, here's what I do. I get this thing all dipped out here and um, then I take a little salt and I'm gonna just do it over here on the table and I'm gonna get stuff all over the table and but that's okay that's just a stainless steel work table. Okay now you saw I put the salt all over it. How much salt you use is Strictly up to you. This is the first method and the method I use the most. I just take some tin foil, I doubled it. I set that down in there right there, just like that. It doesn't matter if it's still wet. Hold it up, like this. Into a ball, kinda. And there you have. That is your oxygen reduction chamber, okay? keep most of the oxygen out as it combusts in there and the fumes come out uh, and it'll work. There are many ways that you can do this to achieve, to achieve different effects. It's all up to you. Whatever you want to do. Now here's the second one. 
The second one is a whole lot like the first. You dip it, dip it and drip it. <laughs> and you're going to take a little sugar. It don't take much. Here, we're down here where I can see it. And we're going to put a little sugar on it. Just like that. Now, on this, get you a bowl. If you've got some of these little things that are swell, at the bottom of it, not necessary, stick it on it. And then get you some tin foil and drape it over the top. Okay? That will give you maybe a little different effect because nothing is touching the piece. I haven't tried this method. I will on this one. Uh, but, uh, a little interruption there. We'll see what we can do to carry on where we were. So we have these two right here and two different types of oxygen reduction chambers, if you will. And you can fire these in any kiln that'll get up over 1200 degrees. You could probably even fire them in a, in a uh, barbecue grill uh, or a uh, Put you some wood in an old fire, uh, barbecue grill and fire it up. I've done pot, uh, you know, primitive firing that way. Anything that you want to try, give it a shot. Uh, some things that you don't want to do, you know, if your airplane user's manual tells you that the wings will come off your airplane at about uh, 500 miles an hour, you don't want to go 600 miles an hour just to see. You want to go ahead and do it the way it's supposed to be done. And, but this is one of those things where, hey, go 600 miles an hour, let the wings come off, who knows? Might enjoy the ride. So, uh, I think that's about all I can, can tell you about this. Uh, the different things that you can get, depends on the different uh, materials that you combust. So, again, be real careful with this stuff. You splash it on metal, it's gonna stain it don't get it in your eyes don't let the animals ingest it be real 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 careful suggest that you probably go to uh, Wikipedia and just look at ferric uh, chloride and see what they have to say about it and then when you get your product you know uh, go ahead and uh, and read the instructions and anything that has to watch some YouTube videos it's what I always do watch the YouTube videos and then try to reinvent the wheel all right that's it for this video. I'm Captain Mike, and I'm out of here.